Hello and welcome to the Snippets of Leadership podcast. Welcome back to the Snippets of Leadership podcast. It's season two and I'm really excited about getting started. And just in case you never heard of this podcast before and it's the first time you give it a listen, I want to give you a quick idea of what you can expect. I've developed this podcast for anyone who is interested in developing their leadership skills, hence obviously the name. So you could either be someone who is going to be promoted or just got promoted to a manager position and you need to develop a whole new range of skills to do your job well. Or you could also be someone who has spent years in leadership already and just wants to get better at it. Either way, what I've noticed is that wherever you are, whatever your case, the usual trait is you don't have much time on your hands and you need practical tools or tips that you can learn and implement quickly. So here is where we are. Each episode of this podcast is between 5 and 10 minutes long. You can listen to it on your way to work or whenever you have a few minutes to spare. And what you get out of it is one single piece of information per episode to improve your leadership skills. And not to forget the lack of time, you will also get some practical tips and ways to start working with it and seeing what it means in practice. Some episodes are standalone and some instead are part of a cycle. This episode, for example, is part of a cycle because this time we're talking about emotional intelligence. Huge topic, I know, but we can't really shy away from it. One aspect of stepping up to leadership is going from managing tasks to managing people. And managing people brings emotions into the mix. And your job, when it comes to emotions, is to manage them, yours and your team's. So if you have a bad day and you don't have the tools to manage and react well, your whole team will see it and suffer from it. Likewise, if someone in your team is going through some stuff, they will suffer from it and their emotional state will have an impact on the team, both personally and professionally. So if it's ever happened to you that because of something that happened, you felt like your energy was being drained, you kept reinforcing your own negative thoughts and basically you couldn't think straight because of everything that was going on in the background, that is exactly what I'm talking about. And when you're in that state, you know damn well that using logic or trying to be rational about it won't be of any help. So when I say manage emotions, what I mean is know what to do when negativity is taking over and know how to make it better. Know how to cause a positive change in your emotional state, in the one of others, Know how to redirect your attention and energy to where it matters and be able to do the same for your team. All great things, all, th- all traits of a great leader, but to be able to do that, there are four areas you need to work on and master and go through in order. Before I get to them, tempting as it is to skip one, please don't do it. Without all four under your belt, you won't be able to do that awesome stuff we just talked about. So, here we are. Four areas of emotional intelligence. The first one is being able to recognize your own emotions. The second one is being able to manage them. The third one is being able to recognize emotions in others. And the fourth one is managing or influencing other people's emotions. So, in the time we've got left, I want to quickly go through the first point, recognizing your own emotions. Well, if this sounds weird because, well, you know what you're feeling already, I get where you're coming from. I know you know the difference between happy and sad. That's a no-brainer. But let me ask you a question. In your everyday, how aware are you of the difference between feeling happy joyful, serene, or ecstatic, for example? Or between, how about, sad, pensive, disapproving, or remorseful? I know you know the difference between happy and sad, of course, but chances are you don't always bring your attention on that 
and go into a deeper level of detail willingly. And as such, you are not so precise about why exactly you are feeling what you're feeling. That's what I mean about recognizing your own emotions. I mean being able to give them precise labels and knowing why they occur. Being able to trace exactly what's behind them at all times. This, I know it sounds like a lot, but first of all, doing it is not that much work once you start. And secondly, if you do it, it's something that will help you notice a lot more about yourself. So, for this week, I'm going to give you a task and a roadmap. The task is to mentally log what you're feeling and why. Bring up your awareness onto it. You can just think about it or you can write it down if you want. Up to you. And to help you out, the roadmap I'm giving you is Plutchik's Wheel of Emotions. I'm leaving a link in the description of the episode. This wheel of emotion is basically a diagram shaped like a sun with eight rays that at its basic level classifies eight main emotions. The closer you are to the center of the the sun, this diagram, the more intense the emotion will be and vice versa. And this is useful to help you keep track or give you a reference of what you're feeling at that moment. For, I mean, when I've gone through this exercise myself, I found myself to be extremely confused trying to be precise and figure out exactly what I was feeling. And I found that having this external reference to guide me helped me out immensely, at least in the beginning. It's a nice reference to have. You can criticize it, you can, you can do whatever you want with it, but it's a nice reference to have at least in the beginning. So that's it. The first step in developing emotional intelligence is being aware of what you're feeling and why. And to get there, you simply need to be aware and think about it. Be conscious about it. Bring up your awareness and not just let it happen in the background. And to do that, a tool that can help you out, at least in the beginning, is Plutchik's Wheel of Emotions. So do it for one week at your own pace and see how it goes. I will see you in the next episode where we'll go through the next step, managing positive and negative emotions. Thank you for listening. My name is Eduardo Bindazane from EBZ Coaching. I'm a leadership and communication trainer and consultant. And if you have any questions about what you've heard in this episode, please reach out to me via LinkedIn, Facebook, or my website. I'll be answering the most interesting questions on the show. And if you know someone that will benefit from this type of content, please make sure you recommend this podcast to them. Thank you and see you next time.